All right, hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this video of uh, building a computer for music production. Uh, so this is the final finish. Um, you know, so as you guys watch the video, you guys are gonna see how I put most of this stuff together. Also, I use FL Studio for my music production and they have a really, really helpful page uh, for us producers, uh, kind of specifying what uh, makes a good computer for music production because uh, they were saying actually that music production uh, is a lot harder on a CPU than even things like creating video games and stuff like that because they can offload a lot of their their stuff to a video card whereas music production is like pretty much all solely based off of the CPU so you know um, like they were saying like the single core speed is the most important for your CPU but again I'm just gonna leave all the links to all this stuff in the description below so uh, the link to like image line uh, a link to the products as well as I'm doing an article write up so if you want to uh, kind of read my experience of uh, building a computer again this is like my first time building a computer and as you can see it turned on <laughs> it works um, but yeah just check the links in the description and let's get into this okay so I'm just gonna have a quick overview of the parts I bought and why I've bought them again by no means did I like splurge on like the highest quality but these are good very good parts and this will be like an amazing computer for at least like the next five years I'm gonna first start with the processor so this is the i7 uh, 7700 K the K means it's unlocked <clears throat> so if I ever wanted to overclock it and kind of get more speed out of it I can but um, this is a great processor okay so th this this is like the smallest piece of your whole computer and it is like the most expensive so as you can see it's 4.2 gigahertz um, and again image line is suggesting this for the single core speed even though it's a quad core processor so that's the first piece very very important uh, next I will go over the heat sink just because those kind of go hand in hand so in order to uh, cool your CPU you need a type of cooling so whether it be like water cooling or you know something like this so since your CPU gets so hot it needs a way to dissipate the heat <laughs> and this thing is huge like this thing is, is so cool looking so I have to be careful uh, the bottom part came off but this comes pre-applied with a thermal compound and this just helps with um, to get a better, um, I guess, connection on the CPU and it's just a bigger surface area for it to, to cool. A lot of these parts I chose um, were just because I wanted a quiet CPU. As you can see, Be Quiet, right? That's the brand name. And with this Be Quiet, there was three versions. There's like the, the, the dark or something like that and then there's like the shadow and I got, only got like the pure. And like that's like bottom of the line for like their Be Quiet uh, cooling. Um, again, I don't do any overclocking and I'm not really pushing my computer uh, that hard. So I, you know, this is gonna be an awesome cooler to cool my CPU. Next, I'm gonna go over this SSD. So this is a new type of SSD that you can be buying. It's the M.2 form factor, but you have to be careful, okay? Because M.2 is a form factor. So what that means is just because it looks like this, there's two types. As you can see here, it's NVMe. That stands for like the non-volatile memory or whatever. This is what you want, but it also comes in SATA. But what happens is SATA is like the bottleneck. So even if you buy this M.2 form factor SSD, you're not getting the speeds that this NVMe gives you. Because what NVMe does is it plugs like directly into like the PCI. Um, of, of your motherboard or whatever, therefore you're able to get extremely like fast speeds compared to SATA, okay? So I'm actually gonna open this up and show you how small this is, because when I was reading online, they kept saying it was like a bubblegum stick, but I never really realized how small it is. So it's like, here's my finger, and that is how big this SSD is. Like, that is so small, you know, compared to like your old hard drives that you'd have, right? That is your, your new SSD, which is like significantly faster even than the SSDs that we're kind of used to now. You want to make sure it's the NVMe, okay? And on the motherboard, there's actually a spot for this now. <laughs> and this is going to be really interesting because I've never built my own computer. Like, I understand kind of like what all the parts of a computer do for the most part. But to actually build my own, um, it's going to be an experience. You know, I did, I did some research. I read like the motherboard manual and stuff last night as well as like watch some videos, but it's, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Okay, now for your RAM. So now this is an interesting um, thing to talk about is so your RAM gives you like different speeds. So if you go to like the product page of the i7, I think it only supports uh, 2133 as well as 2400 or something like that. But then you look at this RAM and it has 3000. It's just like, well, that's not supported. So on the motherboard, there is um, a setting called XMP. 
profiling and you can enable that, but then you're starting to get into like overclocking and stuff like that. So, you know what? I will probably enable it just to get the extra speed out of it. But one thing I wanna talk about is like, so a new standard right now that people are doing is they're buying 32 gigs of RAM, but it's like, well, this is like $200. So, you know, this is, this is only 16 gigs, right? But if I would have bought 32, well, it's like that's $400 just in RAM, but I don't even think I'm using 16 gigabytes like for myself because like, you know, I'm not doing like heavy video editing and um, my music production, I don't think I've really ever maxed out my RAM, I don't believe. And the thing is, if I ever need more RAM, then I can just buy, you know, another 16 gigabytes and then I, I can get 32. But for now, like, like just like the way how computers are, 16 gigabytes, in my opinion, is gonna get you by fine. Um, and it'll save you $200. Let us hop into the power supply. So um, how this works is it has like like this 80 plus rating. And what that means is, is it's just like efficiency. So as like motors and stuff work, um, you know, they can be putting like better parts in or certain parts in. So like the power you're putting in is actually like the power you're getting out because that's the thing with like electricity and motors and stuff. Um, things aren't 100% efficient. So for example, like let's say like you're putting like a thousand watts into something, you might only be getting like 900 watts out of that. So which means that you're paying for a thousand watts, but you're only getting 900 watts um, output. So I think there's like the white, the bronze, um, gold, platinum, and I think there's even like a titanium or something one now. So this time around, I actually went with gold. Um, usually I would always choose bronze just because I was like, whatever, but I don't know, like, you know, um, it wasn't that much more money. I think it was like an extra like $20 or something. And I went with gold. And another thing to talk about is, um, the wattage. So this one, I, is a, is a 550 watt power supply and how I selected this wattage, you know, because you can get like 500, 600, 1000 watt, 1200 watt. It's like, it's like, what do you need? So the thing is, is like, first of all, what are you putting into your computer? Like parts wise, like, do you have two video cards? Um, you know, what type of processor do you, do you have? Um, all these things are factors. You know, how many fans are you running? And how you find out is you just um, go to a computer power calculator. You just type that into Google and it asks you a bunch of questions and you fill it out accordingly. And then it'll give you a kind of a general idea. Like let's, let's say it said you need a 450 watt power supply. You know, I'd probably just kind of bump it up a little bit and then I went like 550 or something like that. Again, this video card, like I don't need to be plugging it in even off of here. This gets powered directly by the motherboard because it's not a super high-end graphics card, whereas a lot of the high-end ones, you need to plug in directly off the power supply. Okay, I would take this out. I'll just show you this just quickly, just because I opened it up before just to look at it myself. And this thing's like heavy and big and very, very cool looking. So another thing when you're buying um, a power supply is you wanna be making sure of um, modular like you don't have to get modular but it just it'll, it will allow the inside of your computer to look cleaner also allow for like better airflow and stuff like that um you know you can buy probably like a cheaper power supply without modular and all these cables would be coming out of your power supply you know instead of just choosing what you need and then for my video card so um again since i do uh, my video editing in sony vegas um, it takes advantage of something called OpenCL, which is why I went for AMD Radeon. And then like the 560, like those are just different uh, tiers, you know, so that I think there was like the, four, like the 400 series, the 500 series, uh, and it kind of goes up. And people who use Vegas highly recommend Radeon cards. And so that's why I got one. And then I'm not working in 4K video or anything like that. So that's why I got like only like a two gigabyte uh, video card. Again, all this stuff I've just kind of researched as I was buying it. You know, I'd ask, well, do I need an uh, eight gigabyte uh, video card? Do I need a two gigabyte? Like I don't play video games and stuff like that. I just do music production and video editing. But I feel that 4K video isn't gonna become a standard until at least like four or five years in my opinion. I just kind of find that when these new technologies come out, they they do take time to become a standard and become affordable for us like rather than you know just paying tons of money and then even like YouTube right now like yes uh, there is like the option to watch like in 4k I believe but I don't know even for myself like I don't even think my internet is fast enough half the time like the video takes forever to load so it's like I'm not gonna be working in 4k I'm working in 1080p um, and then I am also working with 60 FPS. In this video, I recorded in 30 FPS just because I wanted my memory card to last longer. But for like my vlogs and stuff like that, 
you know, I'm in 60 FPS just because I kind of think it looks cool for vlogs. That's kind of like my little rant about, you know, um, in terms of what to buy and stuff like that. Because you know, I could have went for the four gigabyte, I could have went for like the eight gigabyte and I could have paid an extra hundred or I could have paid an extra 250 or, or like whatever, right? So this was only $150 Canadian and it's gonna do the job, I, I believe, great um, with, with video editing and stuff like that. So this is what it looks like. Um, another thing I wanna mention is noise issues. It's just in some areas, like because I when I bought my parts before, I didn't, read up enough you know i was still new and stuff like that i'm still <laughs> i'm still new i still haven't built my own computer before but i'm talking like my first computer so my first computer what happened was um i had a blower fan is what it's called you can just look this up a uh, video card blower fan and it's just a single fan and i believe it's you know it just it cools your video card really really good or whatever but it's just it's so loud like it's extremely loud so what i uh read was the more fans you have the quieter the graphics card is. So you can get like the single one. Um, you know, I went for, for two fans just uh, because if you have two fans, they don't have to spin as fast, right? Because you have two fans doing the job. Um, another thing too is with fans is like the bigger they are, uh, the quieter they are too because they don't have to uh, spin as fast to get the same amount of airflow as like a smaller fan, right? A small fan would have to spin really, really fast. And you know, like when you have a smaller fan and a bigger fan, they also have different pitches depending on their speed, right? Like a small fan, like would be like really high pitched, I think. And then a bigger fan, it would be like a lower pitch. I'm thinking all about quietness with my build because once I do tutorials, and then for the connection ports on the back, that's important once you're starting to get into how many monitor setup you have. Like currently I have a four monitor setup, which is so amazing. I love it. Um, it just allows me to be so efficient. So these are all just things to think about, you know, if you want like that dual setup or like that quad um, screen setup, um, you have to make sure is your screen HDMI, does it have display port? Um, and then what are the connections on here as well? And now my motherboard. So this is like what I was waiting for, for like the longest now. Like I had everything else and I had to wait two extra days for the motherboard. So um, I didn't splurge super hard on my motherboard, but this is a decent motherboard. So the biggest thing when you're buying your motherboard is you have to make sure that the socket, so these CPUs, they all come in like different socket size, which is the LGA 1151. So if you're gonna be buying this processor, you have to make sure that the motherboard fits that socket. So, you know, if there's different socket sizes like 2011 and stuff like that, you know, like LGA 2011. And then if you go to like the AMD side, um, it will have a different number. And you have to make sure that that socket is like fitting the socket of the motherboard. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna talk about is just hard drives. So the only reason why I think we're doing this nowadays is just because SSDs are so expensive. You know, like, like, the, like this bubblegum stick one. So for 250 gigabytes, it was like $180 or something like that. Whereas this two terabyte hard drive is only like $80, right? So that's why we're, we're using an SSD as our boot drive, as well as installing like software such as like FL Studio, VSTs, um, you know, your sounds can be going on here and stuff like that, but a lot of like the things that you want the speed out of so that when you load your VST that it loads super quick, you know, you don't have to be waiting for all like the presets to load or anything like that. So, you know, my VSTs, uh, Windows, everything is going to be installed on here. And then for me, what I personally do is I actually install Dropbox on here and that would allow Dropbox to be, uh, in the cloud, you know, it's all every all like my files are all in sync, you know, so if I went to like my laptop, everything's in sync, but then I can also be backing up my hard drive. So that's what I personally do. And then the last part here is my case. So this is a big case here. I got to back up my camera a little bit. I wanted a silent uh, computing experience, you know, especially when it comes to recording and this actually has sound dampening in it. So this is the fractal design, uh, define, R5, I believe, and I got white this time just cause like white, I don't know, I think it's gonna look super, super cool. You know, there's like a fan right there. So this has a uh, sound dampening material. Um, and I was in between getting the window to kind of show off stuff because uh, this motherboard, it has like the new RGB stuff. So you can start working with like LED lights and everything. But in my opinion, it's just like, I don't know, like I'm not really into that stuff. You know, I'm more focused on performance. I'm not really focused on like the aesthetics, like making it look all pretty and stuff like that. Um, you know, like once I install everything, yeah, I'm going to make sure like my cables are, you know, go around all nice as well as like, have good airflow. This does have like USB 3.0 there on the front. I was also looking at like a be quiet model, but it was like, 
250 ish dollars whereas this was like 150 you know again so it kind of got down to the point where it was just like performance versus value in any industry it always kind of plateaus at a certain number you know what i mean so for example like you always get a certain value for a certain amount of money you pay but once you start getting into like the really really expensive you're only getting like a certain percent better but whereas like when you're like way down low it's just like yeah you're getting horrible performance because you're paying the cheapest but as soon as you start paying just a little bit more you're kind of in that nice balance in terms of yes you had to pay a bit but you're getting the quality and then again like i said once you pay expensive you're only paying just for a little bit higher percent out of you know what you're paying for most of the time that's in most cases but the cool thing with this is i can be taking out these uh dry bay cages um again that would just allow for better airflow uh so i can make some some hot fire you know what i'm saying and then like what these cables are your start button your usb cables your headphone that's just like what like all these cables are you know and then on this side once you put like the motherboard in that's where all these things are gonna be plugging into